That's good. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February 19th in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. What's up? And with <laughs> us today, we have John Richards from England. Welcome. Hello, I'm not DJ Richards. No, no. <laughs> but we have DP Higgs, <laughs> Dread ah. Pirate Higgs. Welcome. Now you're from Western Canada, of course. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, and the science. <laughs> oh, we added one. <laughs> and conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Do robots dream of electric sheep? We'll talk about it uh, in an upcoming show. Though I do have a question. If you if we allow Satanism to be one of the topics in the opening roles, shouldn't we allow spaghettiism? Well, well, obviously. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. I can either add spaghettiism <laughs> or take away Satanism. Which one? I'd say spaghettiism. One. And well, uh, it's better it's, represented on the show. And two, I feel like it hits Pastafarianism, though. There you I, go. It, it holds the whole topic because it's not limited to spaghetti because <laughs> spaghetti is a kind of pasta uh -huh. the, not not all pasta is spaghetti but all spaghetti is pasta okay yeah. very good point it's a categorical thing so i'm very calling good. it what pasta fairyism pasta get it in there, get it in yes. there. I, support it. I support it i support it okay cool all right so the, guys oh there's, go on no, there's no taglioni fairyism then that's true that's no true. exactly right exactly i i did want to top jump into the topic but i do love just catching up with everybody so how about this uh dread pirate hicks why don't you tell us like mm -hmm. a couple of weeks have been well they've been uh pretty good pretty good yeah i uh i just got myself a new camera so oh, uh look sharper and, uh, uh, green screen and so uh, and of course uh daughter five had uh, been good enough to put together this uh background loop for me okay. which is taken from world of warcraft yep and it's a uh, on a ship cool so it's uh, quite appropriate yep nice nice, nice nice guys nice and your lighting's good too like it's it's a it's a well put so together. it's coming together yeah, yeah makes great radio <laughs> <laughs> i also tell this uh yesterday i got my second hole in one of playing disc golf for my second year of playing it doesn't happen all the time and some people play for decades and never get a wow. hole Congratulations. I know some guys who are like in their 60s and they haven't gotten one, but I was there during one guy who was 60, his first one. But I did my second one solo, so it's not as fun. You just end up being in the middle of the woods and then screaming, let's go! And then the birds fly a little way and you just look around, there's nobody there. But you take a picture and, and you send it to your friend. <laughs> anyway. The first one I did was in a tournament and that felt a lot better, but uh, the second one's still just as good. So that's yeah. Yeah, that's a highlight. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, but a picture doesn't show you doing it. You need a video. Truth, truth, truth. And the next one needs to be on video. How about that? Uh, that's it. Otherwise, we're into the does a tree fall and make sound if nobody's exactly. there? Correct. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, John. Ty, the burden of proof is on you. Very yeah. true. Very true. Thankfully, this happened so many times. I'm going to get to the point where it's just going to be happening so often. People will just be like, oh, of course, he got a hole in one. He's Ty. He's amazing. John Richards. <laughs> What is going on with you? Well, I'm where to start. Also, what happened uh, to that tugboat? It seems to be frozen in the water back there. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry about that. It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's a after all. Yeah, it's it's a mock up. <laughs> so the thing is that this morning, uh, there's it's going on over here, you know, because as you know, we've got a, an established church, which is ridiculous, but it's coming under question particularly because we have a coronation coming up and the church has a big deal in that. And, and so it's being questioned whether we should disestablish the C of E. And even the archbishop himself 
I think in a moment when he didn't know the mic was on, said that he'd prefer the C of E to be disestablished than for it to split into over gay marriage issue. So things are really hotting up. Yeah, uh, in a quick little slice of world news too, uh, Florida is electing to supplement standardized tests, you know, uh, countrywide standardized tests in favor of a more religious favorable test that's popular in Bible schools or uh, Christian schools. Let's be flat. It's called the CPL. And what it is, is essentially a test that uh, very similar to the SATs formatted. However, a lot of the passages come from popular pastors for English uh, awareness or have Christian flavors to it. And of course, they don't test the biology or the math as hard. And so you can get grades a little bit higher on the CPLs compared to SATs. And they're trying to use that as the new default standard. They've lowered the bar. And it's always a scary thing when schools or politicians are trying to lower that with regard to children's education, because it's one of the yeah. things that has a much bigger impact 20, 40 years from now when yeah. you realize, oh, there's a yeah. bad uh, variance in terms of quality of education across this country. And it's and, always. And as you say, in 20 years, they'll be making very unwise electoral decisions. Yes. And they know that. And that's why they're promoting it and forcing it. And that's the whole. That's how the, you know, the kibosh is cooked, as they would say. Larry Rhodes, you know, Hold we can talk about politics all day, but we have our own show for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Dude. What's been going on with you, my friend? Oh, not a lot. Uh, yeah, I was talking about all these video references making good radio, but we do have a video component that uh, you can find pretty much anywhere online. Just do a search for Digital Free Thought Radio or then click on videos and you'll see nice. all of our smiling faces. Mm. Um, talking about, uh, you know, Christianity in America, um, Heather Cox Richardson came out with a, a few sentences this morning that's kind of scary. Uh, let me read them to you. It says, more than half of the Republicans now reject the idea of democracy based on the rule of law. Instead, support Christian nationalism, insisting that the United States is a Christian nation and our society and our laws should be based on evangelical Christian values. Right. Forty percent of the strongest adherents to Christian nationalism think that true American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save our country which is scary, very yeah. scary. But if you think 50 years ago, that number would have been way higher. Uh, we are trending in the correct direction. Uh, this is scary information. And it, back then a quarter, Christian nationalism may come out swinging, you know, right. violence. Well, but, if, if, uh, you guys, if you guys ever need any help with putting a revolution down, we'll be there for you <laughs> across the Atlantic. Sure. Uh, I hope uh, you guys bring time. the tea, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bill, I would say uh, we've seen that playbook in action overseas. We know it's effective. And I think it's just essentially, you know, trying to take tips from authoritarians as best as they can to try to right. stay in power. Mm -hmm. What we hope, though, is that the trend is that this is forcing it. The, this is forcing these death rows to, to occur. And it's not that this information didn't always occur. Like you said, Larry, 100 years ago, this would have been like, of course, Christianity is the number one thing in this country. Even 50. Right. Yeah. I, it's good that it's trending down to 50. And I hope that, you know, as people continue to get educated, which is why we need to make sure these tests remain standardized to the highest level possible so that kids have access to the best information possible and can be fixed if they are lacking. And we can address that. Um, and we don't lower the bar so that we can maintain a low standard of education. Um, we should high, always <clears throat> raise that bar. Um, all this leads into getting people off the mindset of a singular dogma and realize that we live in a multicultural, multifaceted, nuanced world. And hopefully we can go past our country and go to a global standard. I'd love to have that one day where we just say, hey, this is our global world. We all get sick together. We all die together. We all live in the same mess together. So let's clean up because that benefits everybody. Yeah. But speaking on that, I want to talk about things that have been really fun and interesting. And that is uh, AI. I've been playing a lot with it. Um, there's this program called ChatGPT. The fun thing about it is, yes, you can use it for conversations. Yes, you can use it to help you get recipes. But you can also, oh, go ahead, Dred. Did you have something? Well, the benediction. Oh, did you want to do the benediction? Okay, yeah. <laughs> of sure, course I benediction. Okay, yes. go well, ahead, and as, I, as I promised uh, the last time I was on, 
Sure. This is one. This is a song that was actually created uh, through uh, Chat GPT. Okay, Ooh. go for it. All right. Hallelujah to the FSM, creator of the oceans and seas. All hail the sauce, the noodle, and the cheese. In his name we laugh, love, and feast. In his noodly arms we find solace. With every twirl of spaghetti grace, and through life may and though life may bring a sauceless place, we trust his flavor to fill every space. With meatballs as our shields and garlic bread as our sword, we face each day with a noodle-filled horde, ready to embrace his will with every bite and cord. I don't know what cord means there, but you don't know what cord means? Okay, good one, Alan. Sorry. Let us let us raise our forks high in joy and praise to the FSM above, for he is the source of all our love and the master of the art of carb filled love. Nice. Ooh, Ram. 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 I do feel like that should have been saying in a more shanty pirate style. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I asked I actually asked for the melody uh for a for a birthday song done in Pastafarian style. And Chat GPT says, I do not possess the creative abilities in order to create a original melody, but do something lighthearted, he said, in the in the spirit of uh comedy and uh, satire right. and all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we could uh, probably gra grab a hornpipe from off the internet and set it to that. Right. What uh, I do uh, what? a hornpipe and set it to that, right? Oh. I've got one complaint though. Go for it. You used sexist language for the deity. Mm. He, him, all that, yep. <laughs> all that male stuff. And yep. over here, over here, we've got a serious movement afoot because a lot of the uh, equality gurus want to remove the maleness from our Lord. Or it solves a Lord. lot of problems, and why not? Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's instead of our father. Who art hmm. in heaven? It's going to be our non-gendered parent who art in heaven. Cool. <laughs> when we laugh, but like historically, the guys who came back from the top of the mountains were like, "Yeah, it's a guy." The the <laughs> that was pretty. He had a he had a you know a male sex organ. It was yeah, and everyone's agreement was like, "Yeah, yeah, we all saw that." Yeah, okay, we're going to tell everybody that as long as everybody knows that's what it was. It, it's such a bizarre thing to to attribute it to a supernatural deity yeah mm -hmm. guys i love chat gpt it's a really really cool service it's a lot of fun you can make songs you can make poetry you can make movie scripts and read them based on whatever flavor you like it's another thing i found is you can play adventure games with them so you can it's basically just play a video game where it's like hey make an adventure game based on and you just give it the parameters and it starts prompting you with questions and you just type out what your moves would be and it makes the rest of the world as you play. It's an insanely fun thing to do, but it has inspired um, some interesting debate regarding whether or not uh, language model AIs, which is what a chat GPT is. It's just a, it's a neural network that's interpreting information, going to a re bunch of resources and without any awareness of what it's doing, putting together based on algorithms, a coherent sentence that it's giving back to a human being. And that's it. It can't, it can't understand what it's saying. It can't uh, make music. It has its limitations, but it'll explain them to you in a conversational tone that appears as if you're talking with another human being. But it's probably one of the most accessible and best demonstrations, at least in the mass market, of, a, uh, of what could be in the future, which could be potentially a, a an AI that is capable of true thought. And we had a conversation about true thought on the Discord. I want to, or and as and as well as our Reddit group. And I want to understand what do we in this show think thought is, and then whether or not there will actually be a day where AIs can actually approach that or do it or even do it better. And I think that'd be an interesting conversation. Likewise, we'll lead into eventually, maybe even the second half, whether or not robots can have souls. Larry will not get into that section right now. We are talking about <laughs> thought just first. So Larry, uh, what, do you, shoot. what do you think <laughs> thought is? And uh, what would robots need to be able to do in order to, to uh, actually demonstrate that they have thought? That they have original thoughts? Well, you're going to have to define original thought. What is thought? What is thought? 
Just talk. Well, I'm keeping it open ended. What is thought? Define what it is. Well, I think that it, thought is basically number crunching or idea crunching that we we do in our, our minds, uh, and our minds are the product of a working brain. Um, that's our consciousness. Now, the thing about it is, uh, are AIs conscious? I don't know, but they certainly pr um, calculate uh, or crunch thoughts, numbers, and all that, and they do it better than we do. Um, do they have their own purpose, will, whatever you want to call it, uh, direction without us? I don't know. At this stage, it's hard to say. Um, think of, I mean, here is an, a very intelligent thinking agent that has access to the Internet. Do they on their own go out to the Internet and research topics that, that interest them? Who knows? I doubt it. Uh, but if you ask them to, they'll do it. Now, that's the impetus. That's the will. But you're supplying it. And they aren't supplying their own, as far as we know. It's, you know, it just needs more input, more, uh, I don't know, more research to find out if they're actually doing it or maybe what we could do to help them do it. Okay, I'm making, I'm making notes. Impetus, will. Uh, Dred, go on ahead. Well, you, you know, Many people talk about the stream of consciousness. Um, so in as much as we don't fully understand what consciousness is, uh, it does appear to be something about continuity. So when I, today, I go through the course of the day having these thoughts and whatnot, and my consciousness does not go away when I go to sleep. It's, uh, it continues when I wake up. Uh, unlike a computer or um, a machine or whatever, where when you power it down, it's gone. Uh, there is no, you, you've interrupted whatever stream uh, of, you know, pseudo thought or whatever was going on there. It's uh, it's a, like a, a, a series of film images um, as opposed, or stills as opposed to a film which is what consciousness seems to be more like is a stream. So the argument is uh, that because computers stop when you turn them off, that's a demonstration that they don't have consciousness and therefore aren't thinking because that's a crucial component of thought. Consciousness. Yeah, I, that, that's what I would think. Yeah. One of, one of the criteria anyway. Go on ahead, Dredd, if you have something to add, I'm sorry, Larry, and then we'll go to John. What's up? Okay. Um, well, an anesthesiologist can take a person down to a, a level where they're not thinking at all, where they're not having images or, you know, not processing, not dreaming, but then they can bring them back. And then your brain at that point accesses memories to be able to bring itself back to consciousness and, and back up to a state of the conscious thinking, just like you do when you wake up in the morning, you ever wake up in the morning and then think about the things that you need to do that come back to your mind. I would think that a, an AI would do that when you turn it on. So, you know, it would, it would access the memories that are on the hard drive or virtual drive or whatever, and then bring it back to a current state of active thinking. I don't need to check to recover missing files. Dredd, I'd like to yeah. illuminate on that response. And then John, would you mind telling me what you mean by thought just so we can get all of our definitions? Sure. What is thought? Oh, and what uh, okay. and if you don't think and if you don't think robots are doing it now what are they lacking in order to get to okay. that definition yeah very interesting subject and and we jump straight into what is consciousness because it's been the hard problem hasn't it for decades but i read an article recently which may lead us to understanding what it is and it started out talking about some people who have had damage to their brains which means that they claim to be blind, but in fact, or blind in areas of their, their field of view, like in one side, one half of their field of view. But in fact, if you test them by putting objects on that blind side and saying, you know, paint that object, they are able to do it, but they're not aware that they're doing it there's a way that they're able to do it um mm -hmm. and, and we, we think this is because there are two levels of uh, analysis two centers of analysis of 
the input from the eyes. And what's happened is the, the higher level has been disrupted in these patients. So what, although their eyes are functioning as an input signal and they can use their arms to respond to that input signal, they can't see what they're seeing, if you see what I mean. So the idea is that at the higher level of the, the vision input, what's happening is rather like a representation is being constructed on a cinema screen, and that might lead us to understand what awareness is, because we think that there are some lower creatures, or that's judgmental. There are some other creatures that um, aren't able to do the cinematic bit, but are yeah. able to see <clears throat> at the basic level. So we think, or I think, in my opinion, that it's possible that that route will lead us to understand consciousness as being aware by reconstructing inside your head what your input sensors are delivering to you. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm. But where, yeah. AI, where AI can't do it is because it doesn't have sensors at the moment. It doesn't have an input from, well, we have more than five sensors, but it doesn't have a live input from a chat GPT can't see, basically, or hear. Or, or sense anything. And we think that it might need a live input before artificial intelligence can become conscious. Okay. And when it does that, it's still gonna be different from biological consciousness because it's digital, whereas biological consciousness is analog. All, all of the neurons have a number of inputs and a single output, whereas poor old computer chips only have one switch. All right. I would like to give my thought on, on thought. And then I know everyone's raising their hand to have comments on everyone's different opinions. I'm throwing my own horse into the race. And then I know this will be a really interesting subject. So uh, my idea of what thought is, is um, pretty straightforward in that it is essentially uh, a process of uh, modeling information. And it's yeah. a very general definition that is applicable to a lot of other things because I don't put thought on a very high standard. And I and I base it only on things that I can demonstrate actually exist uh, uh, objectively. So I can't demonstrate that consciousness exists. I know I have an experience that I call consciousness, but I can't argue that's the same for anybody else. I can't argue that it's the same for bats or dolphins. I can't argue, argue that it's the same for split brain patients that have a much different interaction between separated hemispheres of the brain, where different sides of the brains can have demonstrably different opinions about things, yet they agree with each other on what a consensus of the universe is in one person's mind. It's a very interesting set of experiments that are done. But the main thing is, I don't put consciousness in my in my toolbox for deciding what thought is because I can't demonstrate what consciousness is. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying I, I don't have a tool to examine what that actually is. So I'm not going to use it to define something else. But I can take thought and say, hey, I am processing information. It may not necessarily be random. It may always come from my environment. It may come from a certain stimulus, but I am taking this information and I'm processing it. Does that mean that I can do it? Well, I can demonstrate it based on that definition. Does that mean a computer can do it? Maybe, I mean, it's, I'm not, I wouldn't argue that there's, again, anything more mystical than thought aside from processing information. So I might use the term more loosely in saying, hey, I put this into uh, uh, my, my uh, automated flow and it'll think about all these different things and I'll output something that's pretty interesting. And I use that term in a more looser sense than probably what's being discussed in this conversation. But I at least want you guys to know what I mean when I say thought. It's just a very, dry term of processing used largely in a layman sense. And I don't mean anything more to it than that. And so uh, Larry, oh, uh, Dredd, I saw you raise your hand first. What do you think about our definitions and what were the other comments that you guys had? Oh, Dredd, did I lose you? Oh, was that me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. What oh, do you think okay, about sorry. our definitions? What any comment, questions or comments do you have? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to make sure that we don't conflate the definitions of um consciousness and awareness yeah i would because actually be really happy those, if, I, honestly sometimes I'd those be happy terms if, are used interchangeably right 
Yeah, absolutely. Because I think you say, I, really I am conscious the water. of my surroundings. Right. It's different than saying, you know, it should be different or it could be different than saying yeah, I'm I, aware of my surroundings. And I agree. I want to have a conversation on thought. And I know consciousness is is one of the things that comes up. But in the same way how when I want, when I say I would like to have a conversation about physics and someone brings up string theory, it's like, I don't want to, I, I, I really want to talk about grounded physics for a bit. Can we talk about just like hard mathematical models that we know are demonstrable and work before we bring up more theoretical stuff? In, in mm. the same aspect, can we talk about thought uh, without okay. bringing up consciousness or awareness or, or feelings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea yeah, of yeah. thought, but what I, do you think, Fred? I would I would say that that thought is um, is uh, unique to biological um, organisms or organisms uh, that have brains uh, simply because the the way the brain works. Um, I, I know John said that the brain is analog, but in some respects, it's also holographic in in the way yeah. that uh, sure. um, things occur in the brain. Okay. Uh, you could you could cut out a piece of the brain that's uh, responsible for language, for instance, uh, or damage it. And that process is actually reallocated to other parts of the brain to compensate for the lost uh, center. Um, so, Dred, I would like to know, poke in as that... much as it's analog, it's also holographic. Dred, I hear you. I that's would like to poke at that thought. just a little bit. If you had like a beings. if you had a bee, for example, an an insect that doesn't have a brain but is capable of language, like it, we have a demonstrable language of it when it flies to its hive, has very specific patterns to describe distance, the amount of food or nectar yeah. in a particular location can communicate. The bee has a brain. Bees. The bee has a brain. Okay, okay. So like a uh, a series of uh of of working centralized neural works or or, or an actual organ it has a brain. Works. okay okay and starfishes and starfishes uh they are capable of reproducing recognizing uh enemies going through different kinds of uh transport programs they can remove move themselves from bad stimuli go towards good feed themselves like do they 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 have a central nervous system but they lack a brain I, yeah what, what I'm, you... well they have a distributed neural network i guess okay but are they capable of thought you don't need a brain you don't need a brain to be to to move towards food and away from danger no i see because bacteria fact, do that right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. single cells are capable of yeah. doing that all right guys we're going to go to a quick break we'll come right back and and have uh the the another round of this intriguing conversation uh larry quickly take us out Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Station. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we are. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, I want to know what John was going into regarding our subject. John, you said we don't need a brain for, for thought. Would you mind elaborating? No, I didn't say that. I said we okay. don't need a brain to respond to stimuli. Okay, okay. Even single-celled animals can, well, it's, they wouldn't be necessarily classified as animals. Protista, that uh, they can detect various stimuli and respond to them, like light and dark. And Plants as well, right? Yes. Well, the, the the terminology of animal and plant doesn't apply at that level. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but we do know that plants can like move towards certain... Sure. Right. Uh, but they do that right. without a nervous system. They yeah, do that I without think. a nervous system. Uh, Larry, what do you think? Well, I'd like to address this thing about the senses, uh, that AI doesn't have senses. <clears throat> well, AI has connection to the internet. The internet has connections to cameras all over the world. They can get video input. Um, they have. They may not have a touch, but there are, there are sensors out there that uh, regular that monitor temperatures and and all this. There's all kinds of sensors out, sensors out there. Hearing, as long as you have a microphone, they can hear you. Matter of fact, on my uh, Quest Two, I have an artificial intelligence application that I can literally talk to and mm. they hear me. 
I, so uh, they, the AI does have plenty of sensors and senses. I, I'd also say on a more fundamental level that senses aren't necessarily needed for thought and, or make right. you better at thinking because mm -hmm. we have, for example, people who are blind or deaf who are just as mm -hmm. capable of thought as anybody else, blind right. and deaf people who aren't any less thinkers than someone who can do both. Yeah, um, and uh, they, you could say they have more senses than we do. I mean, can you see an electronic a JPEG? I mean, without bringing it up on your screen? Right. They can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they know how to do th uh, look at thousands of pictures in a second. Yeah. We, we are rather, rather poorly gifted as far as sensing is concerned. I mean, even bees, yeah. we're talking about computers. Bees, uh, but bees well, can see. Speaking, computers. computers don't look at JPEGs. No, no. They, they, but they can see them uh, enough to be able to um, replicate them in different fashions. You know, I, I take this picture and make it look like Picasso drew it. They can do that, so they must see it in some in some manner. Well, they're number crunching. I, what Chat it's, GPT T what Chat GPT does to get back to that is it predicts the next word. Uh, it's, play, it's playing chess with words. So, John, I do hear what you're saying, but I think Larry was making an actually pretty good point, where it's like you could have a, basically a prompt to a completely different AI system that's not Chat GPT that mm. takes a picture, understands what's in it, and then processes uh, a prompt and understands mm. what the prompt is, and mm. then correlates two new informations using two separate neural networks to make a compromise between the prompt and the original image. It's a really sophisticated and really mm. interesting yeah. concept that a robot can do that without yeah, understanding yeah. necessarily what is in the prompt meaningfully yeah. or what's in the picture meaningfully, mm. but is able to abstract it empirically into just hard data yeah, move yeah. it into a new picture and says, this is what you wanted, but I still don't understand the thing that I'm making. Like, I don't understand yeah, its yeah, impact yeah. in terms of like how it'll make you feel or how yeah. beautiful it is. I'm just, I'm just putting these concepts together in a oh, way yeah. that's rational based on my information, what art's supposed to look like. What you've uh, just described is facial recognition. Okay. Uh, to an extent of that too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Dread Pirate, what do you think? Well, again, I think we have to be careful with our terminology. Computers don't have neural networks. Robots don't have neural networks. We're not there. And so um, it's not, I don't think appropriate to use that terminology when we're talking about technology. Well, um, I think the program only, is only organisms, biological organisms have neural networks so by I'm definition. To, uh, by definition, mm. I'm just helping you out here. Um, there's a terminology for artificial intelligence called neural networking, which is yeah. not based on biology or like synapses in your brain, but connecting servers that have databases. This is mm. a commonly understood term yeah. that is, I mean, it's a degree that you can get in college. It's, it's one of them. It's, it's a, it's a they call it neural. It's called, yeah, it's called a neural yeah, yeah, network yeah. because it's modeling yeah, wow. what, what the yeah. synapses in a brain are doing. I but guess I better start read more but, books. But it's purely, <laughs> it's purely, what do you call it? It's just, a name it's just an arbitrary name applied to a model that it's based off of so it's oh. modeling neural networks in your yeah. brain but it's using big towers and databases in order to do it yeah. but it functions so similarly that you can get an ai that can make music or poetry and yeah. stuff and you're like oh it's kind of like a neural network so yeah i understand what your your original point is dread i'm just letting you know that its usage is is in artificial intelligence is neural networks as well and that's what i'm yeah. referring to yeah, yeah. Yeah, larry what's up close. I think uh, Dredd is a bio chauvinist. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're we're going to have to uh, widen our our, our right. definition of intelligence. Yes, I mean yes. You, if you say that it takes neurons to produce intelligence, well, you may be right today, but wrong tomorrow. It's coming. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do feel like the benchmarks that. for intelligence when they're mm. made mostly by humans the benchmarks are biased towards humanity. Like in the same way how we said only humans can use tools because we have, we yeah. make tools and we have thumbs. Mm -hmm. But if you look in nature, there's plenty of animals, birds even use mm -hmm. tools. But we say, oh, but that's not the same because they don't have thumbs. It's like, well, why did thumbs become a component right. of determining what's a tool or not? Because we have thumbs. That's so biased towards humanity. I feel like in the same way, if we don't realize that if there's going to be a component or a, a trend where we can build things that can do things better than what we inherently believe we're the only things capable of doing. 
And we will miss that line if we continue to have that sort of bias. And I feel like thought removed from consciousness, removed from awareness, removed from emotions, just thought, hard processing of information is mm. going to be one of those things that computers may already get closer to doing and yeah. may even do better than if we don't start paying attention to it. I don't think yeah. we're there yet. I honestly don't think we're there yet. I do think what Chad GPT is doing, for example, isn't necessarily thought. I don't think what the AI is doing with the pictures and prompts and making music videos, that may not necessarily be thought. That's like a calculator, just you're putting in nine times nine and it's punching out 81. Like if you want to call that thought, I, in some weird way, I could consider it that, but not in, to, but to make it more meaningful where it's like I'm doing an artistic pursuit, I'd love to see some more critique or feedback. I want to, I want to, I want a robot to be able to make a piece of art and then explain why it made the choices it made in that art and like defend it based on criticism and, and have it have some more deeper understanding of like the choices that it went through rather than just the root procedure of well, what, what the inspiration was. Yeah. Yeah. Like, tell me what the yeah. inspiration, why did you cite this from? Why'd you pick these guys and not these guys? I want the robot to be able to find that when that happens, I'll be like, okay, you're there now. Like, even if it's just wrote, you know, chat GPT, giving the excuses, I'm fine with that because it can at least show reflection on work that it's done and give me but, some more meaningful feedback. Cause that's all I want from other people too, when they talk about what their thought process is. And if their thought process can change and evolve based on like time or input or considerations for the environment that it's making the art in, oh my gosh, we're there guys. Like I, in my opinion, that's a thinking AI. We're not there yet, but that would be the limit for me. What so do you think? It, it, if, you, if it paints a picture that's basically red and you say, why did you do that? And it says, because red is my favorite color. <laughs> How are you going to know whether it That's, was fed that? Piece? You have a daughter that probably did that last, <laughs> last <laughs> night. You would let that go. You'd be like, oh, that's sweet, honey. And then you just go back to your, your video games or destroying Christianity in England, whatever you're up to on your free time. I'm not saying it has to completely change my world. I'm just saying it needs to demonstrate thought. In my head, that'd be thought. If you can look back on its work and say, hey, I chose this because of X, Y, Z. I like this and it's my favorite color. I'd be like, that works for me. You're, you're, uh, it's a fairly juvenile answer, but it doesn't demonstrate that it's a lack of thought. It just means that it's a point where it can continue to advance from. I'm fant I'd be happy with that. So can you ask chat GPT to design this destroying Christianity in England game for me? <laughs> I want that. I did want to talk about, um, okay. So we well, we're going to discuss the concept of a soul and Larry, don't get, don't shoot me down just yet. But in the mm -hmm, discord, mm -hmm. we had a conversation about the last two episodes we had about chat GBT. And we said, we agree where a lot of atheists are in the group. We agree that humans don't have souls. We don't have, or we don't have a way to find out if humans have souls because we don't have soul detection machines, but we're also fairly inclined that whatever the popular argument of what a soul is, humanity doesn't have that. And uh, until there's better demonstration, uh, otherwise we can be rest assured that we don't have souls. We shouldn't worry about them. We should focus on other stuff. However, as we talked about souls and like what it is, it's just a copy of yourself that transcends past your body and goes into like another realm. We were thinking about how AI could be better suited for having souls. And again, we may have to expand what the definition is of a soul, but like I can take a copy of a book that I read, a physical book that I read and have it be on like a USB stick. I can take that. The library can burn down. The book can be that or turned to ash, but I still have a copy of the book. I can put it into my computer. I can still read the book. I can email it to my friend. They can still have the book. The book isn't uh, a monolithic entity. It's just a bunch of data, but it's transcended its physical form and can exist in a way that's indestructible and always existing in some in some server or some database or some internet or some neural network somewhere. But, uh, it, but it still does exist in physical form. As ash? No, <laughs> as information, right? I mean, uh, if you have a copy of a book on a database, it's yeah. still present in physical form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a bit of, it's a bunch of bits on a drive, right? Yeah. It's transcended well, one form and moved to another form, right? What Moses okay. would have yeah. given for one of those instead of those heavy stones. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Larry, what do you think? Well, I was just going to oh, say. Oh, I know that, you're uh, going to be the one who crushes it. Oh, before we get to Larry and his destruction <laughs> path, John Richards, do you have a, a, a comment on souls? And do you think AI is closer to having a soul than uh, humanity? Well, here's the comment. Hmm. If it, AI is an artificial intelligence, yes. so obviously any soul it might generate eventually is going to be an artificial soul. I so love it. Why, 
I propose that it's a rubber sole. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, the idea of artificial souls. How about that? What do you think about artificial souls? All think soul is a loaded word. Are we talking about consciousness? Are we talking about a consciousness that can be moved from one place to another? Now, here's the concept. Who, since when did we as a bunch of atheists and, and our select Pasifarian have become authorities on what souls are who's to say souls are consciousness at all my 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 whole point is we do not have a work a good working scientific definition of the word soul we okay. have what you said earlier a popular uh understanding of what right. a soul would be if it existed mm -hmm. we also have a popular uh working pop F definition of a leprechaun doesn't right. mean the real mm -hmm. you know it's just a concept that we have massaged to be a certain thing uh, it's not like we ever had a soul or a leprechaun in a lab to be able to find out what they're made of, what they react to, what their temperatures are, uh, whether they uh, register on any particular scientific equipment like the Ghostbusters use to detect them, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Dread. Oh, biochauvinist. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah biochauvinist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, this okay, idea that uh, soul exists as an immaterial um entity i guess mm. uh, you know the, the, i mean the discussion long has been how would these two things ever be able to interact anyway um and, it, and it's interesting because i was just listening to a podcast with uh, sam harris and um he, he was talked to i think daniel dennett and also referred to uh, some letters between Rene descartes and princess elizabeth and uh, Rene was going on about souls and, and how they would, uh, you know, that we should assume that they're real and then work backwards. And of course, that didn't satisfy Princess Elizabeth, who was really quite a skeptic, and I was quite impressed by it. But uh, again, you know, this, uh, the difference between a material thing uh, that exists in the universe that we exist within or is a part of, and the idea that there's an immaterial aspect, how would these two things ever interact? Right. Wow. And that's such Very a problem with thing. religions all over the world and that they start with an answer and then look for evidence oh, yeah. to support it rather than the other way around. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm, I wanna I want to know that. which Princess Elizabeth, the one that became Queen Elizabeth II? Well, the one that was contemporary to Rene Descartes. They're going to say she was, oh, uh, first. She was, she was mm -hmm. 19 at the time when they were having these yeah. discussions, and well, he was 47. He he died in 1650, so it must have been first Princess Elizabeth. There you go. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's very good points that you guys are both making because, and it's changing my mind on a lot of stuff because what souls are used for is ammunition to demonstrate that the immaterial transcendental universe exists the universe that doesn't need a physical component to actually have a demonstrable impact on our physical world. And that's where our, our brains or consciousness or souls go to as an immaterial aspect of ourselves going to an immaterial thing. It's, it's, it's used to argue that the immaterial realm exists, but there's no demonstration of the immaterial realm. And so the more that we give ourselves credence to believing that souls exist or use that terminology, the more we lead ourselves to that toxicity that things that we can't demonstrate to actually exist can exist or do exist and that's a yeah. dangerous aspect if we don't have a well a reason to to prove it yeah. dread or i'm yeah. sorry biochauvinist what do you what do you think uh yeah well i was going to point out about dark matter and dark energy mm. right so uh, you know scientists and astrophysicists they based on their observations of galaxies and motion of stars and all that kind of stuff believe that there's something having a gravitational impact or effect on the motions of galaxies, but which we cannot see. And so they call it dark matter. It's not to say it's immaterial. Right. It's a placeholder for something that exists. Correct. In real space. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's yes. measurable. Souls, yes. souls don't have that. I mean, souls are not, not even a placeholder for something that exists. Right. Because... Right. A soul by definition is immaterial so it doesn't exist within the universe as matter or as a thing right? now i would throw this out um i have spoken with christians 
who uh, uh, in front of tables who have have told me that just as much as we can't define love or consciousness, and we can. they have an experience of their soul being filled or had experience with the Holy Spirit or had experience in some way that was beyond what their physical bodies could comprehend. Like they are alluding to something that is transcendent, transcend, help me out, Dred, transcendental to their transcendent. 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 Transcendent of their physical experience. Yeah. Um, what kind of credence can we offer to that sort of a uh, explanation? Uh, well, the the thing is, it can't be transcendent because it's happening to you, <laughs> and you are a thing in the universe. So, mm. to to suggest that you're having a transcendent experience is it, it's impossible because you are a being having the experience. How can it possibly be transcendent? Yeah. Transcendent of what? Yeah, ghosts can't right. influence you because you're right. matter, and ghosts right. aren't matter. Right. Mm. Right. During these transcendent uh, experiences, generally what they're experiencing is a, their body being dumped uh, a whole bunch of endorphins yeah. uh, other or other chemicals to make them feel yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, they've, uh, they've found a Oxytocin. way. Oxytocin. Right. Uh, a lot of times you, you can do that by... Uh, working with a crowd like in a church sure. you know, mm. you're in the entire yeah, group collective effervescence yeah right yeah. can be uh, spiritually manipulated by the preacher yeah. you know so the, to bring them up to a certain level of uh yeah. exactly you know i wonder and, if there's and about, you know, i've had experiences with lsd where i've had transcendent experiences believe yeah. me they're mm -hmm. pretty freaking weird yeah. but mm. at the end of the day yeah. it's, it's chemicals all chemicals working in my brain right to produce mm -hmm. effects that you know, yeah. while I can't explain them, while they're mm -hmm. they're unique and transcendent, they they are happening to a physical being. I'm going to say right. something pretty mean, and I want to know if this is fair. But I wonder if there's something that ties the conservative Christian culture to lowering your expectations for crazy phenomenon, <laughs> such that when you go to a, a a religious meeting on a Sunday, you're just blown away by people playing acoustic guitar and like singing psalms out of a verse. It's like, whoa! Did you hear what he did? He went from a G chord to a C chord, back to the G chord. Oh, my brain <laughs> can't handle it. And I'm thinking, have you gone to like a metal concert and heard it? No, no, no. Like minor no, no. chords? You would blow Sorry. your mind too. What's up, John? Sorry, no. Going from G to C and back again, that's not transcendence, that's transitions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, again, lowering expectations could lead to problems, right? Um, mm -hmm. I did want to make one point before we close the show. Uh, the idea that uh, AI can have souls is a problematic term only because souls are used to try to explain away things that we can't necessarily test or demonstrate. And so we should make the argument that if someone says, hey, it's a soul, it's like, it's still based on the reality. It's still based on a physical entity. It's still a physical thing. Information stored physically. Even if it's on the internet, it's coming from a wire from a server somewhere. And mm. it's stored- as a hardware base. Right. It's stored on a disk somewhere. Even if it's a soft disk or a hard disk, it's on something. You're just getting access to it. Or so brain. Don't think, so don't think it's in space just having a good time with Jesus and drinking water with the flying spaghetti monster. It's it is physically somewhere. Not to sorry, that was that was a mean thing, but like I imagine even the flying spaghetti monster is physical. Bioshovin, is Mion help me out with that? Well, there... I, I you know, again, it's a it's an avatar. It's, <laughs> it's an explanation <laughs> for things that I don't understand. Correct. Great. Uh so we had some really good points today. Um, Larry, I really appreciated your thoughts on on the soul. I know you get a kick out of that. Um, I would love to do a quick turnaround on everybody and see if they had any final thoughts on the subjects of AI thought and souls and anything we can do to find where they post their channels at. Uh, Biochauvinist, where can we start with you? What's your final thoughts on the show and where can we find your stuff at? Um, well, I uh, live stream this. Uh, I'm doing so right now. It's 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, on Sunday. Uh, and that's when I live stream this. Uh, you can find my stuff on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. And I also do the um, views on the news through the Global Atheist Network at 11 a.m. on Sunday, PST. So, yeah, check it out. If you like, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, let's uh, carry on, Soul Brother. Nice. Very cool. Um... John Richards, where can we find yourself? And and what do you think? Final thoughts on the show? 
Well, I, uh, my final thoughts are: I want a name like bio. Um, what's it? What's he called? Chauvinist. Bio chauvinist. Chauvinist. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is discrimination. Why can't I have a name like that? <laughs> Well, you can find my stuff on Free Thought Channel. And mm -hmm. we had a, a very good chat yesterday with a South African s science and medical journalist, which uh, it, it's an interesting field because she's in the same business as me for in, in, in a sense, because we're both trying to make complicated ideas understandable to non-scientists. And But the thing is that there's a tightrope to walk because people want to read sensational stuff and mm. science usually isn't. So there's, an, there's a temptation to exaggerate it. And that is a, that's a, a wormhole you don't want to go down. Also views on the news, you want to plug that? Yeah, views on the news tonight. Well, tonight by this time, <laughs> UK time. And I'm hoping that you're going to come, Ty. And yeah, I'm, I'll be there. I'm relying on you too, Dred. Cool. Great. Uh, my final thoughts on the show is thinking can mean a lot of things, but in the dry terms, it's processing information. There are different levels to it, you know, and when we talk about AI, we're not talking about thinking like a starfish or thinking like a cockroach. We want to know, or what we're mostly interested in is thinking like a human being. And while AI can think in a certain way where it can like brute force its way without awareness of what it's using to come up with comprehensible answers to stuff, it's not necessarily the way how we think. And what we're interested in is not whether or not AI thinks, it's whether or not we can get something that can think like a human. And I do think it can reach that point. And I think it can even do it better, but we haven't gone there yet. And so I'm really excited to what the future can happen or can be whole. And when a robot can actually reflect and have awareness of what it's putting together, that'd be a really, really fun conversation to have. Maybe we'd invite you on the show, uh, future AI. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dred, what do you think? May I, may I just plug one author? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Daniel Dennett. He's uh, he's a philosopher. He's done lots of uh, work on consciousness and, mm -hmm. and what it is. So uh, if anyone wants to delve a little deeper into what consciousness is or yeah. the latest research, uh, yeah. check out Daniel Dennett. Great. I'm hoping to get him on Free Thought Hour in the near wow. future. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wonderful. Well, and you can, you tell can me when that is because I'd love to be a part of that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We are in conversation, as they say. Yeah. We are co communicating. It haven't, hasn't got down to the date level yet, but we're we're investigating that. By yeah. the way, you can find my stuff on Let's Chat on YouTube or on the local disc golf scene if you're in the Nashville area. If you find me throwing disc, feel free to join our group. Uh, Larry, what, final thoughts on the show? <clears throat> or am I closing us out? Sure. I, I just wanted to say that the time to believe in souls is when they are proven to exist. Uh, and if they don't exist, where does that leave all the religions of the world? Think mm. about it. Yeah, yeah. By the way, if you live in Knoxville, the Atheist Society of Knoxville has weekly meetings uh, at a bar here in Knoxville that you can come to, whether you're an atheist or just curious. Uh, we meet in person every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. So come inside, look for us at, the, at a big, long table. And uh, say hi. What well, introduce yourself? Uh, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archive, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. You can find my book, Atheism: What's It All About, on Amazon, and my YouTube channel handle is at Doubter Five. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. Thank the thank you, Dread. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Can I have a final bye. word? Bye. I want a final word. Final oh. word. Go oh, ahead, John Richards. Final word. What's up? Well, somebody who hasn't got a soul, he's without a soul, must be an R soul. What? <laughs> He's playing with radio terms. Oh no. <laughs> See everybody.